Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nails and Beauty Talk. I am your host, Asia the Bird. We are back again. Today, I have a very special guest with me today. She is a nail artist, nail competitor, and salon owner. Please welcome Carly Snar. Hello, Carly. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you for having me. How are you? (laughs) I'm good. I'm good. You are most welcome. So I want to kick off this interview talking about your upbringing. So what was your upbringing like and how did you get into the nail industry? Hmm. My upbringing was probably normal or your typical upbringing. Um, but it was in my household, just uh, me and my sister and my mom. Uh, my parents separated before I was born. Um, so I it was just us three girls in the house all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I did stay close to my dad. He was just a half a mile up the street, um, but he we never lived together. Um, so it was very much like all girls, everything, all the time. So right. uh, my, my grandma actually um, used to let me paint my nails at her house. Um, they also used to live next door to me, my grandparents. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, they, they still do live next door to my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, and my grandma would let me paint my nails and wear lipstick and stuff when I was like two years old. Mm-hmm. And um, that's probably where all of my love of the beauty industry got started was with her letting me do that she even had like a little mirror that she nailed up onto the wall that was like mm-hmm. two feet off the ground so I could put lipstick on right. and um I would like smear it all over my face and she would just let me go <laughs> at it and um I feel like maybe not a lot of parents would like allow that to happen so I feel like grateful that she let me play and experiment with that stuff because that was like really really fun to me <laughs> Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it was a really small town. I graduated with probably like 90 other people. Um, everyone who went to my school, we went together. We were in school together from kindergarten to 12th grade. Like my school was K through 12 Mm -hmm. and, um, really, really small country style living. Mm -hmm. Um, but I ended up moving two hours to, um, northeast to Detroit a couple years ago to the big city and Mm -hmm. um that's where I'm at now all right that's a good story um Mm -hmm. so in terms of within Michigan how is the nail scene like down there in Michigan um I forget where are you at I am in Maryland so I'm in the uh I'm in within um, the Washington DC metropolitan area okay okay I didn't even realize that um Cause you guys are, that's like, I've heard DC has like a higher, um, higher, uh, level of income than most other places. Like DC I've heard is wild for, um, the cost of the cost of living is higher out there. Yeah. Right. So you're close to that. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty close. Like an hour or so. So I would say I, I don't know. I'm kind of in the city now being in Detroit, but I'm used to my like in the middle of nowhere country side mm. lifestyle growing up, I would say the nail uh, community is not too big out here. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, I a lot of people do get their nails done um, and it's growing, but I wouldn't say Michigan is one of the like most influential places as far as like just fashion and beauty period. Mm. Um, I, when I was um, the first salon I worked at in Adrian, Michigan, which that's another small city, but it's mm-hmm. bigger than where I grew up. Um, mm-hmm. Adrian uh, is where I learned how to do nails. I was apprenticed there. Um, and I was the only one of the only ones in my salon who could do nail art. And we were like the only salon in the city that could offer nail art because it just wasn't that sought after on top of that available. And I still believe it's probably like that in Adrian. Like there's not a lot of nail tech that do a lot of crazy nail art. Um, Mm -hmm. I would say that it's similar in Detroit, but there is, there is more people out here few and far in between. Um, But we're more niche. Like you gotta like know someone who knows someone to be able to find those like good nail artists. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I moved out here and I couldn't find a salon that I wanted to work in um, just based off like Google searching. Um, 
-hmm. This is like me coming from a whole different city and not knowing anyone out here. So I didn't like have like word of mouth or ways of like figuring out who the good people are besides just like Google searching. And I couldn't find any salons that were like Mm -hmm. up to like the standard of what I expect of myself as far as um, like high quality and like really artistic there is like more fancy high quality salons but most of them only offer like just regular gel polish manicures with right. not nail art um mm-hmm. so I guess that's a longer version of what I could have said short <laughs> <laughs> um so who really inspired you to get into more of the artistry of nails so um my first job out of high school I worked at a retail store um some people might remember it or know about it. It was the Deb shop. Um, and it was like a young girl's clothing store. And I started to get really into clothes and dressing up and um, that whole scene. But I guess it all started with my grandma with me being like into like makeup and hair and nails. Um, but when I was working at Deb, I really was getting into doing my own nail art and doing like my coworkers nail art hold on one second I'm sorry that was are we still here I'm sorry that was <laughs> someone called me um but I would say uh, when I was working at the dev shop they um they sold nail polish and I would like ask my coworkers to go get their nails done ah, I'm sorry um that's my my boyfriend's dad calling me um Uh does that I'm sorry um does that um sorry I lost my train of thought so yeah so I would ask my coworkers to go get their nails done at a nail salon and like get them long and get acrylics and have them not paint them so that I they could come back to me and I could paint their nails and like design them and everything and I like had like this little gig going where I was like hey go get your nails done and I'll paint them for you and like I was like begging people to go do that so I could paint their nails because like I would do my own but then it was like once I did them I was like well that's it like I need more nails to do like I didn't I didn't realize I could like probably buy tips and um they, well they didn't have press-ons available like that when I, I, I was first getting into nails like that was like 12 years ago um but now they have a lot of like blank press-ons that you can design yourself and um Mm. but that's kind of how I got started with actually getting into doing nails was I was asking my coworkers to let me do nail art on them and Mm. then um one of my coworkers got her nails done one day and they were long and they were cheetah print and they had glitter in them and I was like infatuated with her nails and I um kept on like being like let me touch your nails let me see your nails and she was like girl just go get your own nails done and I was like huh I never thought of that I never thought of getting my nails done I had never gotten my nails done my whole life until I um I was 19 and I was like I guess I could huh so I went and got my own first set of acrylics done um when I was 19 and I just fell in love from there. Like I got my nails done every single week and the same thing, I would have them not paint them so I could go home and paint them myself. And um, then I tried a few different nail salons within my area. And one of the salons that I started going to regularly was like, who does your nail art? And I was like, I do. Um, I have you guys do my nails and then I paint them at home. And they were like, you should do nails. And I was like, huh, I, I, I did think about it. I kind of planned on going to hair school um, mm-hmm. shortly after high school. Um, and I had looked into like going to hair schools, but I was like, I do want to do nails too. And so I was thinking maybe I could learn how to do nails. Um, and my, my nail tech was like, well, we'll, we offer apprenticeships. We'll apprentice you just come here and we'll teach you how to do nails. And I was like, well, I, I guess I could do this and I could always go back to hair school and then I'll just really know how to do nails on top of hair. And um, I started this apprenticeship and um, I never wanted to do hair again. I was just like, nails is it for me. I love nails. <laughs> and it, it ended up like being way more in depth and like difficult and like took more expertise than I expected. So it ended up like 
fulfilling me. I thought like I was going to like want to need to still do hair and makeup, which I know a lot of people do, but for me, like I can, I can be busy enough with nails. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. So I want to ask another question too. So what is like the nail education system like within Michigan? Okay. So I never went to nail school or hair school or anything like that. I, w- I took my apprenticeship, oh. but I've heard, I've heard from a lot of people that they don't really learn how to do nails in nail school. Like they teach them the basics of like the sanitary stuff on how to, how to pass your state board basically. Um, but they don't like go in depth on how to actually do nails. Like what it's like to place tips on different people's nail beds because everyone has like different nail beds with different shapes and everyone has like a unique scenario as for how you would apply nails to that person right. and like how to like how what it's going to look like when people come in with bills and they have different lifting issues and like basically mm-hmm. how to troubleshoot and I really really learned how to do all of that stuff really well via my apprenticeship because I got to see firsthand all the different issues that could come in, all the different kind of nail beds that could come in, all the different kinds of people that could come in with their different issues. And um, I feel like I really, really learned how to do nails and uh, like how to work in a salon from my apprenticeship. And I would like always advocate for apprenticeships. Like it's so important to learn from someone. Like you can teach yourself so much, but the only thing you can't teach yourself is someone else's perspective. And I feel like that's really important to learn um, how to like take constructive criticism and how to learn from one another. Um, Because like I said, you can only learn so much from yourself. And a lot of people like do do really well with like teaching themselves like from YouTube videos and different things off Instagram. Mm -hmm. And um, like, I applaud you because that's kind of what I was doing. Like we didn't have Instagram and all these YouTube videos Mm -hmm. available when I got started into doing nails, but I was kind of like DIY. Like I want to do it myself. Like the, the, it starts with the passion, but don't ever be afraid to learn more. Don't ever like be like, I know everything. I'm the top of my game. Like it's super important to always be humble and always understand that you can always learn more. Even like I take classes sometimes on stuff that I already know how to do. Like it'll be like how to apply sculpture forms. And I'm like, I'll take a class on that, even though all I do for like the last six years has been sculpture forms. Um, so I know it pretty well, but there'll be like at least one thing in that class that that one individual does that's special to them that you could pick up off of. And um, so I think it's really important to take constructive criticism, be willing to learn at all times, no matter what your skill level is. Um, but um, even if you do go to school, like be open to like doing apprenticeships or like shadowing people. Um, but from my own personal experience, I've heard people say that they don't educate very well in nail schools or it's mostly like hairstylists teaching how to do nails. And they just teach you like the bare essentials, like how to pass your state board, which is important to learn too. Um, but you kind of need both both of the learning how to do nails and learning safety and health um, and get put together because I do feel like from my apprenticeship, I didn't learn the health and safety part as much as I probably would have in school. Um, I, I know I got apprenticeship, uh, apprenticed by this um, Vietnamese man who ended up being like a huge mentor and father figure to me. But um, that aside, he didn't know enough to teach me the the like uh, blood board pathogens and like the sanitary regulations, like the, as far as like a handwritten. So I just I just finished my apprenticeship and went on to go take my state board and I failed my first time because I did not even know all of the stuff that was going to be on the test. I just thought oh, I know how to do nails. I'll pass the test. But after failing my first time. I realized that like there's like books and study guides that you can get like that they have in nail school and like I've ordered a bunch of them off Amazon and I just read all these books from cover to cover um, because I didn't know what was going to be relevant and then I um, basically had to like self prepare myself for the the state board um, which I actually end up 
feeling like I, I probably know how to pass the state board better mm-hmm. than most people from, from having failed it and having to have like taught myself everything. Um, but it was for sure really hard. Um, but I, I have helped a few people like pass their state boards since me failing mine. Um, I, I also had to, I worked with um, Levette Cephas Beauty Asylum. Mm-hmm. I worked at her salon in Toledo, Ohio, which is like an hour and a half away from like Detroit and um, also the city that I grew up in. It's also an hour and a half away from Toledo. Mm-hmm. I ended up working with her um, for four over four years at her salon and I had to get a new license for my Ohio to work in Ohio. And, um, it actually is like a lot harder to get your Ohio license versus your Michigan license. Um, Mm. and just as far as like how strict they are, like they don't play no games when you're taking your test. If you don't have all the right supplies with you, they kick you out of the test. And Mm. that happened to me. So I, I went to go take my Ohio state board exam and I brought all the same stuff with me that I had at my Michigan test but right. evidently some of the tools I had weren't allowed in the Ohio state um uh testing area so like they were like oh you're not allowed to have this with you you're dismissed from the test and you have to wait 30 days to come back and um take the test again so mm-hmm. I uh, had to take the Ohio state board a couple times too so I'm like kind of an expert on how to take your nail exam for the state board. And also um, it, I, like, I got like a cool like little insight on what it's like different from state to state. And I know Ohio is one of the states that they have kind of a, a higher um, regulation for taking their exam. So the Ohio state exam or if you get your license in Ohio, it does transfer to other states where mm-hmm. Michigan, it did it like Michigan's didn't transfer to Ohio. Mm-hmm. Um, so some, I know some states do that and some states don't. Um, so there, there's like, I don't, I, th- I think California also is one that can tra- transfer from state to state. So I don't know. That's kind of like mm-hmm. information I didn't know before I got into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One thing I, I, like how you touched on was remaining humble because I think it's very important, especially in the nail industry where mm-hmm. you remain humble and continue to grow and learn. And For sure. because the thing is, there's so many things you can learn. There's so many things that can help you propel your nail artistry. The possibilities are endless. Mm-hmm. And like for me, regardless of your level, mm-hmm, regardless of your level. Right. And like, for me, I took cosmetology uh, classes in high school and, before I got into college, I had my cosmetology license. And that's like with cosmetology, um, they only teach like a small portion of nails. And it's not really in depth as to in terms of understanding how to put on tips and many other different forms like acrylic gel and, and many other things. So Or like um, using a drill, like they don't teach you anything like that in yeah, school. Yeah. So how, how are you supposed to learn how to use this thing? It's actually really dangerous if you don't use it properly. And they just are expecting people to just know how to use it off rip and no one's teaching it. Right. Like, exactly. So that's, that's wild. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, I want to talk about salon success. So you have your own salon. So what has been your experience like owning your own salon and what pieces of advice would you give for someone who wants to own their salon? So I actually don't have a lot of experience in owning my own salon. I um, just right now, opened this salon a couple weeks ago so I'm in I'm in it like I'm I'm figuring it all out as I'm going Mm -hmm. um I guess only a bit of advice I would have to people is reach out to other people who have small businesses because they've gone through it um it was really hard harder than I thought it was gonna be um just because there's a lot of unknowns in in going into something like this it's kind of um, like there was so much I could plan for. And then there's so much that happened that I couldn't have planned for. Um, just, just, just be a ready for things that you don't expect to happen and ask advice of people who also have gone through it. Um, because once you've done it, it's actually not that hard. Mm-hmm. Like it'd be easy for me to do this again, but the first time is always going to be like so much trial and error. Um, I'm mm-hmm. still learning it. Like, um, 
I, I'm not sure if I'm going to hire people or if I'm just going to be me myself in here and kind of use it as studio space. Um, I am like really booked out with clientele right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm un- unavailable to take on any new clients. So it's, I do have a new location, but I, I can't take in any people in my area because I can't take on any new people. Um, right. I can't take walk-ins. And um, so it, it's a lot of like, decision making and figuring out your long term goals. And I kind of like, did it um, on a whim, I saw the places available. I'm like, hey, let me give this a try. Because mm. I, I kind of was starting to feel stagnant with last year co- with Corona happening and 2020 being so crazy. Um, mm-hmm. I, I usually like to go to trade shows and do and do competitions and the, a lot of that was not available last year because of coronavirus and I was starting to feel like a stunt in my growth and it wasn't feeling good and I was like I feel like there's something more that I need to be doing and I saw a space available and I kind of mm-hmm. went for it so I was like let me try to do something else that's really hard and stressful so mm-hmm. I can feel <laughs> feel like I'm learning something I guess I don't know why we do these things to ourselves but it always ends up being worth it in the end like the nails mm-hmm. next top nail artist. It seems torturous when you're doing it, but you end up learning so much from yourself when you do it and growing so much that I feel like it's for sure worth it. It's for sure worth doing these hard things because it's all a growing and learning experience. Right, exactly. Now, how would what advice would you give for someone who wants to build their own clientele? And also, what tips would you give for someone who you know, has trouble, you know, dealing with difficult clients? Like what advice could you give in terms of that as well? So they're kind of both of those questions, I feel like are on opposite sides of the spectrum. As far as like building your own clientele. Well, I'll get to that in a second. But like, as far as like dealing with picky clients, if you do have a clientele already, um, I'm like a firm believer in if you and a client aren't getting along or you guys aren't clicking or that client is like really stressing you out and making like you like stay up at night like it's not worth having clients like that like it's okay to fire a client or to let a client know that you're not willing to work with them um and I've had to do that before and it's just try and be like really professional and respectful when you're doing so like listen you have this and this problems with what I'm doing and it doesn't make me feel good. And I don't think it's working out. We're going to have to like, I have other people I could recommend for you to go to, but I don't think as far as me doing your nails is going to work out anymore for now. Mm -hmm. Um, Because there are, there is clients for every person and not every client is going to be the right client for you. And you don't have to take everybody just because you feel like you need money or you need clients. Like if someone is really affecting your life and making you like not feel good about what you're doing or just about yourself, or they're just putting this much extra stress on you, it's not worth it. And you don't have to do it. Like you, it's okay to fire a client and not every client is your client. And I, I took a class once that was, um, that talked about, who is your ideal client and like you're supposed to like make a list of all the things that you would want in your ideal client and just know that not every client is your ideal client and that there's enough nail techs and clients for everyone like you don't have to fight people for clients like your clients are going to come to you and other people's will come to them um Mm -hmm. but as far as building a clientele I've had to build several sets of clienteles throughout my career Um, I I started in Adrian, Michigan. I slowly built a clientele. That was probably the easiest time for me to build a clientele because for one, I was learning. So I didn't want a huge clientele all off rip because I I wanted to slowly like build up as I was learning. But Mm -hmm. I also got clients who watched me learn and watched me grow and and liked being with me, watching me grow. Um, Mm -hmm. So I just got clients based off me being in that salon and me being an apprentice like they like the idea of that I'm constantly learning um but also I was in a busy salon 
So there was constant walk-ins. So I feel like it's always good to like put yourself in a busy salon that takes a lot of walk-ins. Like maybe if you're moving to a new city, um, maybe if that salon isn't necessarily at your price point, um, I think that's kind of a guaranteed way to build clientele is to put yourself in a salon that is busy with walk-ins. Um, like I said, even if it's not where your price point is, or if it's like the same services that you might want to offer, it's a way right. of getting your yourself known in a new city. Um, and when, then I moved to Toledo and Toledo is an hour and a half away from mm -hmm. where I'm from. So um, I also did not move to Toledo. I just drove an hour and a half every day to work with Levette. And um, in Toledo, I don't know anybody. I don't have any friends there. I don't have any family there. So it took a long time for me to build up a clientele there because I'm completely starting from scratch. But it was helpful that Levette was so busy. Um, it was just her and her salon. And she didn't take a lot of walk-ins. She kind of had her own clientele already built um, but she was so busy with her clientele that sometimes I could take her overflow and I could help her out. And, um, but really what I ended up building my clientele off of my like, personal clientele was me just being in Toledo for a period of time. And it's kind of like word of mouth. Like sometimes it just kind of takes time of me sitting in that salon and like letting people know. Be, making people aware that I'm there. Um, and it definitely helped like me talking to Levette's clients um, and, and me um, like doing some of her clients' nails and then the word of mouth from her clients telling their friends and telling their friends. And that's really how I've built my clientele everywhere I've done it is by word of mouth, like getting one really good client in who like is obsessed with you. And then they tell their friends and their family and their cousins and then their cousins and friends come in and then they love what you do and then they share. And um, that's how I basically built my clientele in Detroit. Um, when I moved out here too, I had no friends out here, no family out here, completely starting from scratch. And I basically sat in my salon in Detroit for almost a whole year with barely any clients. But I, I got ended up getting a few clients who had friends who wanted their nails done. And that's really what made me blow up. Like right now, probably all of my clients are based off of three or four clients that I have who just like overly shared my work. Um, but I do know firsthand, it is like a good idea. Another like trick to building clientele is doing your own nails and making them super loud and fabulous and maybe like a lot of bling and some crazy nail art. Because right. for one, anything I do on my nails, my client, that's what they want that day. Like, ooh, I want bling. I don't know why I want bling. It's because I had bling on and they saw it. If they can right. see it, they'll know it's possible and want it. That's for one. But I would say do crazy nails on yourself and then go around and hand out business cards. Because when you hand those out with your crazy nails, they're going to see your nails. And they're it's going to like really be rememberable. Um or memorable to them that they saw those crazy nails and you handed out your business card like two in one they have the business card to remember you by and they're not going to forget those nails and I really think that like the word of mouth I mean obviously this day of social media everyone's like promote yourself on social media like a lot of people I do get a lot of clients off social media too but I still think that old school passing out business cards and word of mouth and mm -hmm. meeting with people and getting that intimate interactions is like what's really going to set it off and I feel like a lot of people are discouraged from using social media to build their clientele and like realizing like I'm promoting this I'm promoting this I'm people just don't like me but people want that intimacy and that like personable like feel that like we don't get anymore so I feel like mm -hmm. don't just rely social or solely on social media like it's important to be out in the world too. I mm. guess that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely true. Now I want to talk about nail competing. So you've done NTNA. Um, so I want you to talk about your whole experience doing Nails X Top Nail Artists. And how did you feel when you were in the top three? So I got into Nails Next Top Nail Artist from working with Lavette at Beauty Asylum. Um, Lavette was 
had entered herself into NTNA season two when I first started working at her salon. So she, I don't think she started yet until after I started getting over there. And then I kind of watched her do it. And um, she opened up, basically her single-handedly opened up my eyes to like how crazy the nail world can be and how wild you can get with it and how creative you can get with it. And that there's competitions and that there's trade shows and that there's classes you could take because I mean, I still am, but especially when I first got started with nails, I was obsessed with nails and I was in this community with people who weren't like minded. Like there wasn't that many other people around me that were as obsessed with nails as I was. And right. to meet Lavette, and it seemed like she was just as obsessed as I was. And then she show, took me to these like con, um, conventions, which were just filled with people who were obsessed with nails. And like, mm-hmm. it's important to be around like-minded people who have the same amount of passion that, that you do. Um, mm-hmm. And you might like be in this closed off little bubble in your own little small town and never know that these other people are out here and I feel like it's so important to go to different trade shows and take classes um and it's just exciting to be around other people who are Mm like-minded um but she she basically opened the door for me for for like the competing and the competition I mean the trade shows um but I I was in her salon with her while she worked on NTNA and like watched her do it and NTNA was so much different when she was in it like it's every year it gets harder and harder because there's more and more things that have already been done now. Mm -hmm. Um, But she ended up making top three. And then that year there was um, the finale show was in Long Beach, California. So she was going to go to Long Beach and she told me I should come with her, but I had only been working in her salon for like two months. I only knew her for two months. And Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know. You're kind of a stranger. I've never been on a plane. I've never left my like, small city before Mm. so I'm like I'm kind of scared I don't know if I want to and she's like well what if we kind of took care of it and like paid for your trip out there and I'm like well that would just be so stupid of me to not go huh so I guess I have to go and Mm. so I went and that like kind of really opened up my eyes to what was possible in the nail world and like like I could never repay her for like that experience, especially for who I was as a person at that time of my life and my career, like it really like opened my eyes to, like to what was possible and like made me so excited about it. So from then forth, I tried out for NTNA every single year. And like, I was like, I want to do it. I want some of that. Mm-hmm. And um, the next year I tried out and they didn't accept my audition. Um, and then the next year I tried out and they accepted me and I like made it to the top. 24 and I made it past the first pre-challenge but then got eliminated from the second pre-challenge and um uh so then I was eliminated and I it was before there was a last chance so I never even got the last chance lab or anything Mm -hmm. and um then I did the next year I ended up getting in a really bad car accident and um I ended up taking a year off of work um that's a whole nother long story I could get into um, but I was off work that, that next year of NTNA, but then the next year I entered again. And that year I believe was season six, the year that I made it to the top 12. And then I ended up making it to the, the top three with Ashton and Nixie and, um, Ashton Harlan and Nixie. Why well, I can't think of Nixie Rose Humphreys. Is that her last name? I know it's Nixie Rose on, on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a, a wild experience. Like, mm-hmm. it's kind of crazy. Like, you could do NTA and make the top 18. And it's kind of like a fun little thing. But if you make, like, it for the further you make it into the competition, the harder it is because mm-hmm. it, it takes up so much time. Right. Um, like, if, if you make top three, just know that you're going to be doing this for an entire year. Like, and they, they say that. They, like, email you at the beginning, like, just know like this could potentially be like a couple week long thing. Or if you make it to the end, it's going to be like basically a whole year. And right. they like have you like understand and agree to that mm-hmm. ahead of time. But it's kind of, you never kind of expect like you'll for sure be the one to do it. So it's kind of, it's, it's a lot to like plan for. Um, 
making it in the top three, it was stressful because you never get a break. Um, it's like every single week, it's like, oh, finally I made it through. And then you're like, oh God, I got another one coming. Right, exactly. Like, there is there is no relief of the stress. And um, I, I would I, I always recommend for everyone to reach out to their fellow competitors because no one knows what you're going through. Like the people who are also going through what you're going through. And um, I definitely like I've reached out to like Hemi Hemi Park helped me a lot in my season. She she was in the season before me, season five, and um, Haley Fortenberry. She helped me a lot, like Lauren Wireman. I mean, of course, Lavette. I had to talk to, um, but then like Emily Emily Nash. We talked. We were in the same season together, like fellow competitors, like competing against each other, like. But in in reality, you're your own comp- you're your own competition. So, I mean, me and Emily stayed up every night on Sunday night for season six together, talking, trying to finish our challenges, like groveling to each other on how stressed we were and how we hadn't slept and how we're not eating and how we think we're getting sick and like it was. I I don't know how I would have made it through without being able to talk to um, Emily. I mean, and Nixie too. And um, I mean, it, it's just, it's fun to bo- create those bonds with other nail techs that you like, it's like kind of like lifelong bonds, but it's like also kind of sad and hard because most of us are not anywhere near each other or in any of the same cities. So kind of have to like stay in touch via social media, but, mm-hmm. and then there's always those trade shows that come back around and you end up getting to see all your friends and um, but we haven't had those in quite a while because of the pandemic. Um, mm. and, and then of course, after, after our season, my season, um, season six, they did Neil's next top meal artist, OPI all-stars, um, edition. And it was like, people competed with each other. If people who have made it to top 12 in the past competing against each other. So kind of the best of the best competing against each other. And um, I did that with Nixie and um, Melissa. Uh, I can't think of what her last name is. Starts with the S. Melissa S. Ended up winning that the OPIs and TNA All Stars. Um, and that was it. Was it was kind of fun, funner. Um, not that it was funner, but it was funner because it was shorter. It was like a month long thing. There was like mm-hmm. 10 of us and two people got eliminated every week. So it happened within like four or five weeks and then it was over. Um, but I think it's important to like, no matter how far you've made it in a competition to like, again, humble yourself and mm-hmm. right. continue to like grow. Um, I think when one of the Nails Magazine live live things, Lauren Wireman was saying that she's like the queen of second place. She's like literally everything she's ever done. She's made second place. Like she's made it really far, but not quite one. And mm-hmm. I think that's like, I, um, Ryoko, the girl who won the first season of NTNA, she said that she, she had tried and failed so many, so many competitions and it, it, you don't always win your first one. It's like so important to remember, like to keep getting back up and that it's hard and it's okay. It's hard for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that like, you need to learn from, from your failures and get back up and do better next time. I feel like it's so important to keep going. Right. Yeah. Very well said. I definitely agree, especially you've helped me during within my season doing uh, season eight. And um, and the thing is, like how you said, it's a whole like incredible experience. You learn a lot. You learn different techniques. Um, You went off a little bit. (laughs) Sorry, my my phone needs to be plugged in. So I'm just going to change my angle a little bit. Okay, there we go. Yeah. But um, like I said, um, it's a it's a very good experience. You learn a lot, you know, and these with these crazy, uh, interesting challenges and everything like that. And I really enjoyed my season because it was something totally different than the other seasons. Because mm-hmm, I, it was. I think with you guys, you had like, like products every week. We had, we had one brand the entire time. Which was, yeah, that was wild. Yeah, which was C&D. So we had to work with that um, brand. And I'm, and I'm really proud even for myself of how far I even came. You, you know, so it, it's really a credible 
an incredible experience and I've done the Olympia and I'm planning to do it uh, in Olympia again this year. So, yeah. So, you know, it, I think it's understanding to trust the process and, and to keep trying, like how you said before. Now I want to shift gears and talk about the DEA awards. So you are finalists. So congratulations again. Oh yeah. And, thank you. And I wanted to ask like, what was that whole experience like, like being on the competition floor and actually like competing in Las Vegas for the BA awards? So that was wild. Like, like I said, I've done basically like four, I've done NTNA four times. Mm. Um, so you would think I have like, and, and when you do NTNA, it's not like you've done four competitions. You've done 30 competitions what? because there's a different challenge every week. Mm. So I don't know how, how many they got, like 15 per season usually. So I've done like, I've done like 20, 30 different little competitions. So you right. think I like, I'm, I'm really like well versed in this and I'm an expert, but all of the competitions I've done have been online and it was very different being in a live competition. Mm. Um, it was really high stress for me. Um, mm -hmm. I had never, I'd never done a live competition before. And um, I, I, I was nervous the whole week before it happened. I was nervous packing because I had to pack my nail stuff. I'm like, I don't forget any of my nail stuff. Like I was like sweating and shaking before we even left. And then when we ended up getting there, I, I kept having panic attacks in my hotel room. Luckily, mm -hmm. I didn't have any panic attacks on the floor or like while we were doing nails. But I think I, I would definitely do it again. And I think I would do better next time having gone through it this time. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no way I could have prepared myself for the BEA awards besides having done it and like um, gotten that experience in mm -hmm. um, because it was very much like uh, Lavette was there. She was one of our mentors and she mm -hmm. said it reminded her of what it was like um, in New York Fashion Week behind the stage. Like it's very detective, like models running around everywhere everyone's in wardrobe everyone's worrying about their hair who she needs to be here at this time why isn't she over there like this person needs their makeup done like very very fast paced and intense and um it was like they told us we would have seven hours to work on our our set of nails but it actually wasn't seven consecutive hours it was mm. really broken up so it would be like an hour and then we would have a break for lunch mm. and like none of us had our full set on in the first hour. So like our nails, our clients would have like, our models would have like six or five nails on. And then like, you just leave them to go eat lunch and hope they don't mess anything up. Mm -hmm. And, and then you, you got one more hour and then you have to break for interviews and then you have one more hour and then you have to break for the models, hair and makeup consultations. And right. It was very intense. It was, it was fun and exciting. Um, Mm -hmm. but a completely different world from the online competing a completely different experience um I'm glad I did it I'm glad I went through it but it was really stressful for me um and also I ended up making some great nail friends out of that um Brittany Nailgasms on Instagram um we ended up creating a bond over the experience and hopefully mm -hmm. we're gonna get to do some stuff together in the future mm -hmm. um but again like you you can't like um replace or like there's no other way of getting like these bonds with these like other nail techs that mm -hmm. are like lifelong bonds that with like these people who you would never meet otherwise because you guys live on the other sides of the country um mm -hmm. and um she definitely helped me through it a lot um too mm -hmm. and but I, I didn't win the competition but it still it was like an honor to like get into like the top three to get the or the finalists to get um flown out to Vegas and like get the experience and I do think I would do it again and I probably would do better next time around mm -hmm. from knowing what all to expect now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now in terms of fashion and nails like what has been your whole take in terms of fashion including nails into the collections because I know we're in the realm of uh fashion week because this month is September and I want to really ask that particular question, like, how do you feel about nails and fashion just coming together? So I'm not like big in fashion and um, I kind of like hate picking out my outfits. I'm like, it's so stressful for me. 
Um, mm. And then working with Lavette, like Lavette is a fashionista and mm. she like, she has like a freaking pair of underwear and she like cuts it up and turns it into a necklace and, and she'd take what the garbage bag and like fold it up a certain way. And like all of a sudden she's got this shirt and outfit made out of this crazy stuff. And I'm like, mm. I don't know how you did that, but working <laughs> with her, working with her definitely opened up my eyes to like, I wanted to not care about fashion, but it's not an option in the beauty industry. Like you have to care about fashion. You have to care right. about what's up and trending. Right. And um, I definitely am more aware of it because I've been in the com- competitive nail world. Um, and it is something that I would aspire to do would be to get to work at, at fashion week for a designer and like kind of get that behind the scenes experience. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like the ultimate goal. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I also have like learned from Laura Weirman in one of her classes I've taken um, Pinterest. Pinterest kind of has this like insight to the future. So mm-hmm. if you Google on or Google, if you search on Pinterest, mm-hmm. um, like summer, spring fashion Pantones for like 2022, you can kind of like see what the Pantones or the color swatches are going to be for the um, fashion seasons for either spring or fall, um, you can like Google those ahead of time to stay up on trends because you know they're already working on stuff for like 2023 right now. Right, They're working on it. Someone knows what it is. And um, so it's out there and it's kind of like just interesting trying to stay ahead of the trends and not just like on the trail end of the trends because we're, everyone's gonna know what the trends are. Like. And they'll, they'll probably be trending for years, but you don't want to, you want to be on the fore end, the front end of that. Like you don't want to necessarily be like on the people who are like just learning about stuff. Like you want to be like on California time where they, they know everything of, of months ahead of time. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so it's interesting for me, like as a nail tech, as a beauty professional, you have to be up on that and you have to like be aware of it regardless of if it's your favorite part of it or not. Like you have to be aware to be the best that you can be in the beauty industry because it's important. Um, It's important. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, Pinterest and social media, that really does help, you know, stay on track in terms of trends and things like that, that are, you know, especially stuff that's coming out ahead of time. So I definitely agree with that. Um, I want to also talk about another thing, like what do you think about the whole progression of the beauty industry? So, oh, um, w- one one aspect of it that I do know is, um, like I said, when when I first started doing nails, only just like ten years ago, um, nails was not as big as it is now. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, what was hot ten years ago was square nails and swooshy line designs and dots. And basic, we had at my salon like seven nail art boards that you had to choose from. What kind of nail art do you want? And it was all swooshes and lines. We had like 300 different kinds of swooshes and lines to choose from. And Mm -hmm. it was like, what color combo do you want? And um, just to think that like, that is like not even how it is nowadays. Like it's like, whose face do you want on your nails? Like like the the limits there is none there it's the endless possibilities of what you could put on your nails nowadays and it's kind of like Mm. a race to see who can come up with something new before someone else like and it's kind of fun but it's also like a little like nerve-wracking and competitive to try and stay on top of coming up with something new and not just doing like something that everyone else has done um so nails definitely has changed so much in the last 10 years compared to when I first started but something that I've noticed that I wish would change more um is the way that nails and nail techs are seen and treated in the beauty industry because oftentimes it seems like we get put on the back burner or we're the afterthought or we're the last person who gets the choice of what's said and done to a model and right. I feel like it's it's not fair because 
we put in just as much, if not sometimes more work than some of the makeup and hair artists. And I don't understand how we are an afterthought. Like it is like nails is important. And and I know CND is a big advocate and Jan Arnold is a big advocate for nails in fashion. And a lot of fashion designers don't want their models to have nails on. They don't want to distract from their outfit, but they don't feel that way about hair because I'll make them wear some crazy hair and exactly. they say it just adds to the outfit. It makes the outfit make sense. Right. Um, and, and that's what Jan says. It's like she's like the nails are part of the outfit. Like you need right. them to go together. Like they, they make the outfit make more sense. Like exactly. it adds, it adds to the creativity of the outfit and to the overall look. And I feel like that's true. And nails doesn't, have to clash or distract from anything else is very right. much a part of the whole look and it's and just as important as anything else and it like really cuts in into nail techs like not just me I know I know it hurts other nail techs deep down to have put so much work into stuff and so much time and effort and so much ingenuity and so much of your soul gets put into these nails and then just for people to say it's an afterthought or you get the last choice of models or um, like you, you get the last, the last of everything. And I, I really think that right. that needs to change in the industry. Um, and we need to be seen as equals with hair stylists and makeup artists because mm-hmm. we are equal. Um, we mm-hmm. do just as much work. And um, I would really like to see that change, hopefully in the near future. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it does because nails, obviously in the last 10 years is blowing up more and more, but even right. especially even in the last couple of years, it has really become seen by everyone. It's all over right. social media. It's all over YouTube. Everyone has a YouTube channel. Everyone. Right. So hopefully with all of this, like new found recognition that people are talking about nails and, and making it a big deal on social media, that something will change in the beauty industry to make us like equal, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree through and through. I think that nails have been so big as of right now than than how it was a decade ago. And I think also, too, I think there should be more emphasis in terms of credit for for us as nail techs or nail artists, um, especially in the fashion industry. And Mm -hmm. with with the beauty industry also is a progression of products. You have a lot of different nail trends coming out, different techniques and, you know, and especially like how we talked about with competitions, like you get a lot of exposure to different mm-hmm. styles of nails that you've never seen before. You know, you get to learn from people around the world. And I think that that is the most coolest thing about the industry that we're in. And of course, does the industry need to be improved? Absolutely. Especially education, especially in like cosmetology schools and nail schools and mm-hmm. things like that, because they don't teach in depth about nails like how they do in certain parts of the world, you know? So I think it needs to be improved, but also it has the perks as well. So I want to go ahead and ask this this other question. How would you define success? Oh God. Oh, that's a tough one. I I mean, I would say success is accomplishing goals and feeling happy within yourself. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think it's about like getting first place in a competition or like necessarily like owning your own business. It is whatever it is to you. Um, Mm. And for me, I've learned that happiness is everything and your mental health is everything. And um, I've had to deal with a lot of like ups and downs with my mental health, like specifically through my nail career and Mm -hmm. like like I'm a huge advocate, like for, like I was saying at, at my BEA awards, I, w- I was having panic attacks and I like struggle with like horrible, horrible panic disorder and anxiety and depression. And mm-hmm. um, I think a lot of people do and they don't talk about it. So no one knows how like common it is, but like, right. I'll talk about it. I'll like talk to people who are going through the same thing. Like, like if you need someone who's gone through it too, again, just like with NTNA, it's, a, it's super helpful to talk to people who also are going through the same things. 
Right. And um, like the only thing I could strive for, like, is to be okay. Like, if I'm in a place where I'm not like, you know, horrible things are happening in my life, like the people I love that are around me are doing okay. Like, if I'm just like okay, like that success to me. Like, and if I could just be in an okay, stable place for a good long period of time, like that would be the best case scenario. So I'm like, if I can be out here like accomplishing goals like overcoming obstacles like Mm -hmm. always doing like more and new things but also like keeping level and keeping like sane and happy like Mm that's success to me Mm -hmm. yeah and I think also too I think part of success is you know celebrating the small milestones and achievements too for sure you know, and, you know, like how you said, it's not always about having, you know, first place in a competition or anything like, you know, extraordinary. I mean, those, that's cool, you know, mm-hmm. but sometimes you can celebrate the small things. And I think the little things really, really matter. And they also, do. Too, you know, what, I, what I've learned, especially in my season um, of NTNA is, you know, is understanding, of course, how to better manage uh, stress, because I was stressed a little bit in my season. And, um, you know, but I've also, you know, I'm, I'm a loving and caring person. So, you know, there's times during the competition where I checked up on people. And I think that's another thing, too, you know, especially for us as a beauty community. I think it's important in terms of mental health for us to check up on each other. And mm-hmm. you know, sometimes it's just to reach out like, hey, I was just thinking about you. How you feeling? How you, how you doing? How's your day? And, you know, sometimes those small things go a very, very long way. So I totally agree with what you were talking about in terms of mental health. And I think good thing with our generation, we're talking about it more and and how important it is to it's okay to seek therapy. Um, It's okay to seek a um, professional if you need help. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay sometimes to not feel okay. You know, so Mm -hmm. it's okay to cry. It's okay to, you know, let your feelings out and, and, to help, you know, to help you heal, you know what I mean? When you hold emotions in, you know, it just boils you up and, you know, you'll add toxins in your immune system instead mm-hmm. of trying to release um, how you feel. So, mm-hmm. you know, so definitely mental health is very, very important. And part of success is managing that as well. Um, in terms of with nail art, I'm going to touch a little bit of, of nail art a little bit. So what is your favorite nail art medium to use? Um, so... Over the years, I've, I've kind of like had, there's times when using crystals was my favorite thing ever was to just bling everything out. There's been times when 3D acrylic was my favorite um, mm. thing to do, but I'm, I'm allergic to acrylic now. I can't use acrylic, so I'm a, a hard gel user mm. 24-7 now. Um, and I, I would say now my favorite thing is like hand painting. I, I really love like, flat hand painted nail art like it's just mm-hmm. fun fun to do um and I, I would say that's where I'm at now like I love blending colors and mixing colors and mm-hmm. getting that perfect shade and um I've, I've, it's kind of been like that for a while now like the last couple of years so maybe that's where I'm like getting stuck right now is I'm like kind of obsessed with hand painting <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a hand painting person, so I love hand painting and 3D gel. I love 3D gel. It's amazing. I love gel more than uh, acrylic. Acrylic has a huge smell. And plus, like with gel, you know, gel, you can still mess with it and and mold it to how you want it. Acrylic, not so much because you have a certain amount of time to work with it. So I think like like with you, I'm team gel. Um, how would you how would you define your legacy? How would you want to be remembered? Oh, geez. I've never even thought of anything like that. Um, (laughs) I guess I would like to just be remembered as someone that could inspire someone, someone who was like, oh, look, she did it. That means I could do it. Or just be remembered as someone who was kind um, and was there for someone else when they needed them because because people have been there for me. Like I always, I actually specifically, my grandma, when I was little, mm-hmm. um, she was like my biggest advocate. Like um, she was always on my side, no matter what. And um, and I, I mean, I was probably like seven years old and my grandma would always say, little people have feelings too. And she was like talking about 
kids, like kids are people too. Like right. there's no difference between a kid and an adult as far as like their feelings and when they're in pain. And, mm-hmm. and I felt like she was the only person in the whole world who understood me. And right. I needed that when I was little. If I didn't have her, there wouldn't have been anyone who could have understood me. Right. Um, exactly. And I like my entire life, I strive to be like, I will be that for someone. I will be that for my kids. I will understand that their little children problems are just as important and as big of a deal as adult problems. Um, Cause I, I really feel like she was like a, a light in the dark um, when there was no one else that could be that for me. And she like took the time to pay attention to that there was something wrong with me um, or if my feelings were hurt or if I wanted something or needed something. And my mom was like, no, you don't, you don't need that. Like, and it was not like a, a like trivial thing, like a toy or something. Just and I was like, I was telling a story and no one was listening to me and now my feelings are hurt. And like my grandma's like, Hey, we all need to stop and listen to what she had to say. Like, I, I, I want to be that for someone else because right. I will like I was so little when she would do that for me and I will never forget it like even regardless of how little I was like mm-hmm. because it was that important to me mm-hmm. and I want to do that for someone else. Right, most definitely. Very well said. Last but not least, where can people find you on social media? So, um I have a YouTube channel with all my nails, next top nail artists, entry videos and um competition videos and challenges and that's just Carly Snar and Snar is S as in Sam N as in Nancy Y R um and my Facebook is also Carly Snar um and I have a TikTok that's Snar at Snar Car so that's S N Y R C A R and then my Instagram is at Carmanny that's C dot A dot R dot Manny I'm I'm thinking if I want to switch my Instagram name because I hate the dots, but um, I think that's all the, all of them, all the social medias. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't have Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a Twitter user either. But I thought with your Instagram name, I thought it was Carmani, like Normani. That's what it kind of reminded me. Of. Well, it could, it could be whatever you want, but it's Manny for Manny, like manicure. Oh, okay. Manicure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming onto the show. It's such a pleasure having you. Um, thank you so much for sharing your story and your knowledge. Your nail art is amazing. Keep reaching for the stars. Congratulations again on your nail competition um, with the BEA and also the NTNA competition. Um, thank you so much for helping me out during my season of season eight. No, yeah, of um, course. You've been a great amount of support for me. So, you know, thank you so much. It's been a great opportunity. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being you and doing your interview process and you're you getting like a nice little plethora of some like really like awesome people that you got on your interviews and your YouTube page. So I'm proud of you. and um, Congratulations on you too for doing your NTNA. Like I know it's a lot of work and don't give up and you did a really good job. You did some really amazing pieces and um, thank you so much for having me on your channel and inviting me and being one of those people who always checks up on people. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Well, thank you so much. Take care and stay connected. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to click the bell for notifications. Also, follow me on my social media platforms and visit my website, asiaticbird.com, and be on the lookout for more interviews to come very soon. Take care and stay beautiful.